Okay. Say whatever you want to say. Y'all took him. They need to pay. She need to pay. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't ask to be. Say his name. 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 Behind so many names, so many tears down faces, and so many podiums with more microphones than they can hold, the civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump. It appears to us that you are the rock behind these families as they break down, as we're crying with them. It seems like you take it upon yourself to be their stability. So how do you do that? It, I don't understand. For those of us who aren't even in it, it's difficult. But you're in it and you know all of these families personally. How is that possible? Well, Ashley, Thurgood Marsh is my North Star. Uh, you know, he is my personal hero. I always consider myself to be a disciple of Thurgood Marsh. I've studied everything that he has done. And he understood a lot of times you were gonna deal with a lot of adversity, a lot of tragedy, but the goal was about building a better world for our children for tomorrow. And that's what keeps me going. I looked at Dante Jr., Dante Wright's little two year, almost two year old son. He, you know, he doesn't know that his father has been killed, taken from him in this tragic manner, but it's so deep. So you have to be strong for them. You have to keep it together for them. And the fact that I know without a shadow of a doubt, we're gonna win this war. Mm. I, I know it with everything in my heart that we're gonna win this war. What, is, what does that mean? How do you win this war? What does that look like? Because a lot of people aren't hopeful about that. You know, Ashley, in first year law school, they taught us about precedence. They said everything has to be based on precedence. Uh, and they try to indoctrinate that in our mind. We have to base everything on precedence uh, for today so we can have consistency in the law so they can apply it in the future. Now, I ain't accept that, Ashley, because I understood that if we based everything on precedence, then that means you and I will still be slaves mm -hmm. because the United States Supreme Court has said unequivocally that slavery was legal in America. But I understood what they were trying to teach us. Uh, and that was that based on precedence, it is a likely indicator of what is to happen in the future. And so when I think about the precedence of black people in America, I think about how we overcame slavery. When I think about the precedence of black people in America, I think about how we overcame the middle passage. When I think about the precedence of black people in America, I think about how we overcame being defined as three fifths of a human being at the formation of this country. When I think about the precedents in America, I think about how we overcame the Dred Scott decision of being uh, told that there were no rights that a black person had that a white person was bound to respect. I think about the precedence of black people in America overcoming reconstruction, the precedence of black people in America overcoming uh, Plessy v. Ferguson, separate but equal. I think about the precedence in America, uh, black people overcoming Jim Crow. And I think about the precedence in America of black people overcoming Jim Crow's much wiser son, Jim Crow Jr. Esquire, PhD. Yeah. And when I think about all of that, Ashley, I know based on the precedence of our ancestors, and everything that they have overcome, that whatever America throws at us in the way of racism and oppression, that we're going to overcome it based on precedence. And that's what keeps me going. Overcoming. It's the most important yet most hard fought precedent for living as a Black American in this country. But it's hard to do after you've watched a grown man cry out for his mother from underneath another grown man's knee. You know, the first time I saw the video 
was in the wee hours of the morning of May 26, 2020. I think I woke up to my phone vibrating. People were saying, have you saw this video where they killed this man in Minneapolis? And so I, I got up and I looked at the video and immediately I thought about Eric Gardner because he kept saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. But I thought it was so much worse than Eric Gardner because he was literally on his ground just begging and narrating literally this documentary of his own death. Yeah. And so I went to take a shower. And by the time I got out of the shower, I, I still was uh, literally getting out of the shower. I saw my office call center had called me five times and you know, I missed the call. I know. Remember, one officer said he doesn't have a post. Maybe we should turn him over on his side. However, Officer Shervin said, no, we're going to keep him in that position. To us, that is intent. And that's why the family is calling for first degree murder charges against Officer Shervin for having his knee in his neck. In a world where a video can exist of a man dying for more than nine minutes, it's a different world. We're never, any, no one's going to be the same who's experienced that. What do you need to see from your neighbors, whether it be in government, whether it be everyday people? What do you need to see to believe that George Floyd did not die in vain? That as his daughter said, that he changed the world. What actions do you need to see to believe that? Well, I'm already starting to see it, Ashley. Mm -hmm. All these people standing up and saying, until we get justice for George Floyd, none of us can breathe. I see it with these police officers coming to pierce the blue wall of silence, coming out testifying against the police. That's something that I had never seen in my uh, professional career. And I see it in you and the professionals who are being able to excel at a level that we've never been able to excel at. And so I know, I think about all the journalists of color who are now getting opportunities because of what happened to George Floyd and that you see these corporations saying, we have to do better. We have to do better as a society, America. I know that you're a spiritual person and you have represented so many families in these cases. When you're out doing your job and you think about all of them looking down on you, what do you what do you want them to know? What do you say to Trayvon Martin and George Floyd and every person that's happened in between? What do you want them to know? Wow, Ashley, that's a that's a pretty deep question. I want them to know that their families and people who believe that their lives mattered would be the one to define their legacy. Mm -hmm. That their existence on this earth was not in vain. That's what I want everybody from Trayvon to George Floyd and all those in between that I represented, that we are fighting with everything that God has given us to define their legacy on this earth.